Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. New York. To think that we're going to New York. Hmm. Wonderful dinner, wasn't it? What a cook Bertha is. Mm hmm. Say, David, put down your pipe and listen to me for a minute. Mm hmm. David, you haven't told me when we're going to New York. David. Hmm? No, are you, you speaking to me? We are alone together, so I imagine. Yes. Yeah. What's on your mind? David, pay attention, please. I'm paying attention. You're not. You're concentrating on your pipe. I'm concentrating on you. Huh. When you're smoking your pipe, I don't believe you hear half the things I say. Have you or have you not decided when we're going to New York? Do you have to know this instant? Yes, it would help. Why? Because I have to... I have to cancel the newspapers. We'll only be gone for two or three days. David, it's extravagant not to. Besides, Fritz and Bertha read the papers. No, they don't. They prefer theirs in German. They said so. Claudia, we are merely going to stay in New York for a few days, 40 miles away. But I have to arrange things 40 miles or 4,000 miles. <laughs> you mean you want to make a production of this? Well, you're only a man. You wouldn't understand. I understand that I go to New York every morning, and it's as simple as pie. Because I'm left behind to keep the home fires burning under the pie. Well, Fritz and Bertha will be here. Exactly. So I'll have to tell them how to keep the home fires burning. They need your help as much as Carter needs liver pills. That's a nice thing to say to me, darling. Sure. Right. You made me feel really good. Fine. David, listen. When are we planning to stay in New York? I don't know yet. Tomorrow, next day, maybe. So soon? Well, I thought the whole point was to save wear and tear, and the rest of this week's going to be a heavy week for me. And the way it looks now, I'll have to work Saturday and Sunday. So, so soon. Good heavens. I better get hold of Bertha right this minute. I'll call you from the office tomorrow, and if I'm going to be late again to tonight, why, uh... You can come down and join me. We'll stay at Mama's. Golly, I wish I'd known. Why? Well, because... Oh, well, you wouldn't understand. You women are always making everything so complicated. I forgive you because you speak in ignorance. Now, let me see, let me see. I have to give Bertha a list of telephone numbers she may need and instructions about the baby. Are, um... <clears throat> are you finished with me? What, David? May I smoke my pipe now? Certainly, why not? Why not? Well, why shouldn't you smoke your pipe? Who told you not to, for heaven's sake? I wonder. Guess I better get hold of Bertha when she's finished with the dinner dishes. Bertha! Bertha, are you all finished? Yeah, Mrs. Norton, in a moment. Well, I don't want to rush you or anything, but when you're finished with the dishes, can you come inside? That is, I mean, if you're not planning anything else this evening. No, no, no. Oh, Fritz and I decided not to go to the ball tonight. Oh, good. So we stay home, so I have nothing else to do. I come right in. No, 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 hurry. We have all evening. Now, let me get some paper and pencil so I can jot down a few notes. Operation and New York. What was that? Nothing. Only I was just commenting to myself that Eisenhower could have used a man like you by his side. Why, thank you, David. I just figure it makes everything so simple for everybody when one person knows what she's doing, don't you? Oh, yes, yes. Now, let me see. Marketing list and uh, telephone numbers, baby instructions. You mean you're going to give Bertha instructions on the baby? Certainly. I was rather under the impression that Bertha had been taking care of the baby all along. Yes, but I was here. Oh, you were here, That's I see. quite a difference. Well. First time since the baby I walked out of the house and closed the door on him behind me. You think it'll miss us? The house? It will pine away. All of the paneling will drip. The baby. I wonder if he'll be conscious or not of our being here. That little... Uh, uh, watch what you say. He's my son. Treat my half carefully. I was going to say that little darling. Well, that's better. He's not conscious of anything except his meal. Now, that's not true, and you know it. He's very bright. Let me see. Let me see. Forward the mail. 
You don't realize the trouble is, you don't realize it's just as much trouble to go away for two days as it is for two months. Well, then let's go for two months. Oh, no, I can never arrange that so quickly. Oh, I see. Did you tell Mama we're coming in? No, not yet. I thought you could call her as soon as we decided. Well, I don't suppose Mama needs fair warning. Mm, heavens knows she's never had it before. <laughs> the only thing Mama ever had fair warning to expect was the baby. A lot of good that did her. <laughs> oh, it would be nice if one didn't know when a baby was coming, don't you think? Sort of a pleasant surprise. Well, I'll talk to Dr. Barry yes, about it. Yes, do that. It. Yes, please. I will. Let me see now. What else did I better remember to remember? Um, 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 mm, what an intelligent look on your face. Shut up, I'm thinking. Oh, miraculous. Canned goods and baby foods call the laundry, call the cleaners, oil. David, I'm impressed. Now, well, that's news. I had no idea it was so complicated to run a house. Which just goes to show you that people don't know about things until they stop things. So right. Mm -hmm. So, now I'm all finished. Good evening, Mr. Norton. Bertha. You say that as if you hadn't seen me all evening. <laughs> I'm sorry. I still speak in that old European way. I try it. Be more easy. No, no, don't. The world can stand a whiff of old York now and again. Now, David, just hide behind your newspaper for five minutes, will you, darling? Bertha and I have important things to discuss. Well, I'll help. Oh, no, you won't. Go on, go on. Here's your paper. Oh, I get yes. pushed around in this house. Bertha, you see, Mr. Norton has just announced to me that we may remain in New York for a few days. Possibly until the weekend. Maybe longer. Say, that is a fine idea, Mrs. Norton. You're not upset? No. Why should I be upset? It will be nice for you to get away from the house and the baby and be with your mama for a few days and go to the theater and go dancing. It is right. You should go. Listen to her, David. Mrs. Norton is disappointed that you're not upset, Bertha. No, I'm not upset. It is natural and good. You're right, Bertha. It's time Mrs. Norton got the hay out of her hair. The what? From where? Don't pay any attention to her, Bertha. He's being pixie. <laughs> any, anyway, it's a good thing. You are young. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Thank you. And do not worry about the thing. Between Fritz and me, we take care of everything. Oh, I'm not going to worry about anything. Why, well, you and Fritz will probably manage a lot better without us than with us. Agreed. Your newspaper, David. What about it? Read it and stop eavesdropping. Not even one little eve. Not even. Now, Bertha... I made a list here of a few things for you, just to make it simpler. I see. I'll try to get mm -hmm. all the marketing done tomorrow before leaving. Yeah. And I'll get a whole pile of baby food. You know his diet, of course. Mrs. Norton, I tell you again and again, I do not like those baby foods that come in little bottles. But they're enormous time savers. But who cares about saving time? Time I have plenty. I prefer to save money. We can afford the baby foods. So? Spend the money in New York. The baby will eat what I cook. It is 100% better for him, too. Bertha, baby foods are recommended by every doctor in the country. Babies were eating before baby food came in bottles. I cook with my own hands for the baby. He likes it, and I know what is in it. Oh, Bertha, you're hopeless. You know you're spoiling that baby something terrible? I like to spoil him. He likes to be spoiled, so <laughs> we are both happy. All right, cut off the baby food. Well, here's the telephone number of the cleaners in case you want to send something. They'll pick it up, you know. Seventy-five cents to clean a blouse, huh? And give you new spots. I clean just as well. Well, here's the telephone number of the cleaners, just in case. And here's the number of the laundry. You'll if you are that. not here, we will not have laundry. A but... little birdie told me that another little birdie was making a list for nothing. Go back to your paper. No. What else, Mrs. Norton? Well, now, let me see. There's Dr. Barry's phone number here, in case you want to ask him anything about the baby. What would I want to ask Dr. Barry? Well, nothing, except he's the baby doctor. You might just want to ask him something. I know our baby better than doctor knows him. David, what'll I do with her? Agree with her. Bertha is the only woman who shows any sense about taking care of children. No, I wouldn't say that. Mrs. Norton, she has sense, too, but different. Thank you, Bertha. And soon she will have experience. That is even better. All this superstition and fuss about having children, oh, it's nonsense. <laughs> Babies will grow into children, and children will grow into grown-ups. And we are not going to change one little thing. I couldn't agree with you more. Children are here to stay. Children have been born for two million years, and they will be born as long as the world lasts. So Dr. Barry and baby foods really aren't very important. I know. I have six. We thank you. We retire. Even I agree. Oh, Bertha, there are extra safety pins in the bottom drawer of his little commode. 
Yeah. I'm 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 writing that down for you so you don't have to remember it. If I need safety pins, I find safety uh, pins. Let me see what else he'll need that you might not know about. If nobody minds, I still think that this is too much preparation for one little baby. I mind, and nobody is interested in what you think. It is her first baby, Mr. Norton. You would be worried if there was no preparation at all. That's telling him, Bertha. Well, in that case, darling, I think you've forgotten a few things. I have. Hey, where are you going? Oh, just out in the hall. Mm, I don't trust you. Go on, don't pay any attention to me. Mrs. Norton, everything will be just like usual. The, the baby will eat, the baby will sleep, the baby will cry, the baby will gargle, the baby... Do not worry yourself. How can I worry with you here, Bertha? Oh, here you are, darling. Now, Bertha, if it rains, make him wear his rubber. Oh, David, you <laughs> don't. And don't let him go out without his umbrella. Hey, listen, don't open anything in the house. It's bad luck. Uh, his raincoat now and his walking stick. I make him take them off. And, Bertha, if he sneezes, say, Gesundheit. <laughs> Translated, that is, God bless you. And if oh, he cries, right. give him a handkerchief. Yeah. Hmm? And if he stops growing, yeah. give him cod liver oil. One or two spoonfuls. Oh, two, two. No. Yeah. yeah. And if he gets dirty, wash him. Wash him. If he wakes up, put him to sleep. To and sleep. if he wants to drive the truck, I give him the cane. Perfect, <laughs> perfect. Any more eventualities now? There's absolutely no telling just how long we'll be gone. And Bertha, I wouldn't want to leave unless I was sure that you were fully prepared. Be quiet. <laughs> Bertha, don't mind, Mr. Norton. <laughs> you know, he's a little bit, you know, in the head... He's also a little, you know, in the heart, <laughs> so I don't mind. Listen, Bertha, we'll talk about the rest of this tomorrow behind Mr. Norton's yeah, back. Yeah, Everything is always easier behind the husband's back. Mm, but mm. <laughs> good night. Right. And sweet dreams. Good night and thanks. Oh, it'll be like a honeymoon again, David. Hmm? What'll be? New York. If only I can be all ready by tomorrow. What on earth else is there for you to do? Well, I don't know, but I'm... I'm trying to think of something. <laughs> My darling, stop trying to be indispensable. David, am I? Golly, an indispensable woman must be an awful pain in the neck. At least a woman who tries to be. Well, you don't have to try to be. Bertha doesn't. She is indispensable. Mm-hmm. So are you. No, I'm afraid I'm not. David, I, I do just want to be a little bit indispensable to you. Am I? Come over here, Mrs. Norton. I'll show you just how indispensable you are. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. One of the pleasant services we're all beginning to take for granted is Coke at the movies. There's something especially friendly and sociable about being able to step up for a Coke before or after the show, right in the theater lobby. It's a logical place for the pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. <laughs>